Hi, my name is Sarah and my channel is Naughty Gnome Crafts. My channel is all about my love of fibery and textile crafts and if that interests you, please stay tuned. Today's video is going to be a review video and it's also a collab with my friend Michelle of Michelle Sews Again. I will link her channel in the description box and our collab is all about using the same fabric. Um, Michelle had purchased a um, Dashwood Studio rayon fabric and I had seen this fabric around and I really loved it too. So I ended up purchasing two meters of it for myself and then we agreed to each, each sew up a garment for ourselves and then reveal what we've made. So after you watch this video, make sure you tune into Michelle's video. And like I said, I will link her channel in the description box below. So for my part, I decided to make a dress. I had originally purchased the fabric thinking I was gonna make a skirt, but when it arrived in the mail, the colors were just so vibrant and beautiful that I decided that I needed to make a dress. And I had recently downloaded the Fiber Mood Julia dress, and I will insert a photo of the picture of what the pattern looks like and also the line drawings. So this is a really simple boxy style dress. Um, it has grown on sleeves. There's a pleat in the back that adds a little bit of interest. And then it has a, an elasticized waist. And then the skirt is a midi length and it has side slits on both sides. I just thought that the simple design of the pattern would really lend itself to showcasing a beautiful fabric, and that's why I chose that particular pattern. I ended up making the size extra small, which does correspond to my measurements, and I always put my measurements in the description box if you want to check that out. So I believe I did shorten the skirt on the Julia. Right now I cannot find how much I did shorten it, um, but I'm pretty sure that's the only fit alterations that I made on this garment. Now, as I said, I had two meters of fabric and this pattern does take up quite a bit of fabric because the pieces are really large and um, the back piece is actually not cut on the fold because of the pleat. It's one really large pattern piece. And so I did, I won't say that I struggled, but I did um, have to take some time making sure that I laid out all of my pieces so that I could utilize the fabric. And I do have some kind of odd sized scraps left over, but not a substantial amount. So it does take quite a bit of fabric. This dress does not have pockets, but I am actually okay with that because this is I made it out of a rayon fabric and usually rayon pockets don't, they kind of sag and they don't really hold up that well. So I was fine with not adding pockets to this one. Now let's talk about construction. Um, so some of the issues that I ran into might've been my own hubris. It's a really simple design and I kind of went into it thinking that I was gonna you know, get it cut out and sewn up in a day and I'd be done and everything would be wonderful. And um, so I did make a few mistakes. Um, so when I was sewing the binding on the neckline, I didn't read the instructions. The normal fiber mood seam allowance is three eighths of an inch. And I did not read the part where they told you to um, make a really narrow seam allowance for the binding. And so I did the regular three eighths of an inch and then I ended up having to make my binding really narrow as a result. Here's the neckline, it's kind of a boat neck and you can kind of see like how narrow my binding is. Um, it wasn't a huge issue, I don't think. Like I think that it still turned out fine, but that was an, a mistake on my part. Um, the other issue that I ran into that I did touch on in one of my other videos is that it, the uh, pattern calls for three quarter inch elastic and I thought I just assumed that I had some in my stash and I did not. And so I had to go to Wawak and order some elastic and then I had to wait for it to come. So the elastic arrived and that was literally the last step because they actually have you do the hems um, on the sleeves and the skirt before you actually attach the um, before you actually put in the waist seam and the elastic. Oh, I forgot to mention, there are um, mitered corners on these hems, which is just kind of a nice touch. Pretty simple and easy to put together. Um, so yeah, that was the last step, was putting in the elastic and you know, you'd be done. <sighs> you guys, this is just like, it's like bringing back the pain, the memories of what happened. Um, okay, so I put in the elastic 
and I had, you know, like sewed up the channel, fed the elastic through the channel, was ready to like stitch the opening closed. And I noticed that there was a section of the skirt that had pulled out of uh, the casing and it left a hole in the garment. And I was like, oh, that's weird. So I took out the elastic. I kind of, you know, carefully stitched that area just a little bit closer so that it would close up the hole threaded through the elastic again, and then there was another hole. And I did this two or three times. Um, I pull out the elastic, try to fix the hole, put it back in, and there was another hole. And so eventually I was like, I'm just gonna like, you know, stop messing around with this. I'm gonna just, you know, put the elastic in and stitch it up and just see what happens. So I did that and there were holes. When I went to like stretch the elastic to get it nice and evenly gathered around the waist, there were just little holes that popped up like all around the entire circumference of the skirt. And I was so incredibly frustrated that if I had not been doing this as a collaboration project, I very likely would have thrown this in the trash. Or at the very least, if I hadn't thrown it in the trash, then I probably would have thrown it in my basket of stuff to deal with later. And then six months down the road, I would have pulled it out of the basket and then thrown it in the trash. So in that respect, I'm really grateful to Michelle that we did a collab on this because it forced me to think about how to fix it and actually follow through. So I did eventually come up with a solution. What had happened was when you join the waist seam, so you put the bodice and the skirt together and you also join the bottom of the casing all in one step, you sewed that seam and then the instructions tell you to trim the seam. And so it's only a three eighths inch seam, so it's quite narrow to begin with. And then I went ahead and trimmed that in half and there just was not enough fabric and the fabric was, was too delicate. It like frayed too much that it just pulled right out of that seam and that's what caused all of the holes. So what I ended up doing was I unpicked the whole thing and separated the, the bodice from the skirt and then I actually threw away my um, waist casing piece. It was originally cut out of the fashion fabric and I just threw that in the trash. I cut a new casing out of a sturdy quilting cotton. Um, I trimmed off the edges of the bodice and the skirt so that they weren't, so that I cut off the frayed parts. And luckily for me, both the bodice and the skirt were just are a tad on the long side for me. And so I was able to successfully cut off the frayed part and it didn't like shorten it too much. So as I said, then I cut a new casing piece out of the quilting cotton that's more sturdy. And this time around, when I sewed the bottom seam and like sandwiched it like before, I did not trim the seam, I actually surged it. So just to have that extra level of security, I surged the seam, I didn't cut off any excess, I just left it there. And so I ended up top stitching down this, you know, the seam, threaded through the elastic, and then, you know, like finished the top stitching. And this time it did not fray. So the only thing that I, I still regret is that I didn't, I should have trimmed the bodice seam a little bit more because there are portions here where um, like the frayed part had been cut off, but there were still some lines of uh, where I had stitched the seam initially. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but I'll do my best. Um, and from the previous stitching line where I had unpicked it, there are like little pulls and tiny, tiny little holes still. And once I, I saw that, I was like, I'm just, I'm not doing this again. And so I just, you know, put a little bit of fray check on those lines just to make sure that they weren't going to um, become bigger holes and then cross my fingers that it was gonna work out. And so far it seems to be doing okay. I hope you can see that there. Where there's where the previous line of stitching was right there, and then there's some little holes and stuff. Um, so I'm really, honestly, quite disappointed with the quality of this fabric. Um, I got it from Minerva. It's a Dashwood Studio, a designer fabric. It was pretty expensive, and um, I've worked with many rayons, but none of them were this fragile. Like I just think that. I don't know. I, I don't, maybe the fabric's just really loosely woven or something, although it doesn't really shift. Um, I don't know what I'm talking about. All I know is that 
I was not expecting the fabric to be so fragile that it frayed so easily. And I was really disappointed in that aspect of the fabric. I think that if I do have a few more pieces of this type of fabric in my stash, I think next time I would make sure to use like a really delicate needle. I honestly can't remember right now what I use for this. Um, but I would make sure next time to use a really delicate needle, like a 70, 10 or like 65, nine or something, maybe even use like a Microtex needle. Um, but yeah, like I was just really disappointed with the way that this frayed so much. I wasn't expecting that to happen. It was really frustrating to deal with. Um, but in the end I did like stick to my guns and I pulled through and I finished the dress and, um, my final verdict on it is that it's fine. Um, I think that the print is beautiful. I still think that the design of the dress is a good match for the, um, the fabric, but I don't really love it on me. Like it's all right. I don't dislike it, but when I put it on, I don't get that wow feeling. It's just more like, this is nice. You know, like, I don't know. I, I just, it is really, I'm not saying that I would never make this pattern again because I do think it's a really simple, easy dress to wear and it's because it's an elastic waist, you can just throw it over your head and go. But I mean, I just think that something about the style of the dress maybe isn't the best for me or I don't know, there's just something about it that I don't love it. I don't hate it either, but it's just not something that I'm really gonna be wanting to grab out of my closet to wear all the time. So I have inserted some footage, hopefully by now, of me twirling around in the dress. You can see what it looks like. Um, I do think it's pretty, I'm not disappointed. Um, I am really excited to go to Michelle's channel and check out what she has made with this fabric and check out what her experience was. Hopefully it wasn't as much of a nightmare as mine was. Um, there was a lot of cursing going on when I had all those holes. And so, um, yeah, hopefully she didn't, her, her experience didn't mirror mine. Um, but yeah, thank you so much to Michelle for agreeing to do this collaboration and um, you know, we got some pretty garments out of it hopefully and Thank you so much for watching this review and if you liked it I hope you will hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. I'll see you again next time